Joining us tonight is Jay Parker. He's the Vice President for Live Events at Dactronics. Thank you so much for being here, Jay. Thanks for having me. Well, there used to be a single scoreboard on one side of a field back in the old days of maybe high school football. Today, there are huge LED displays and panels, uh, especially uh, on the professional side around stadiums and arenas. So what do teams want and what are the newest types of displays you're able to build? Well, what I think, you know, you go back in time, it was just really they wanted a scoreboard. And that was very simple game time, game score. Then we started adding video displays in. And now what we, what we seem to find is people want a bigger video display. You know, size does matter to try and entertain your fans that are in the audience. Um, and these displays also help generate revenue. So you not only want to you know, build a video display that, that matches the, the size of your facility, but you also want to have opportunities to potentially generate additional revenue and, and while entertaining the fans at the same time. It makes good sense. And let's say an NFL team hires Dactronics for their stadium. What are some of the unique features uh, that uh, uh, you can offer them that might be custom made for their fans? Yeah, to, well, traditionally what we find is in the NFL stadiums is, is big. They, they like to get big video displays, unique video displays, like Mercedes-Benz Stadium in, uh, in Atlanta has a, they call it a halo. It goes around the entire top of the stadium, which is larger than life. We've been seeing it at SoFi Stadium out in Los Angeles, bigger than life. And really, you know, what in particular to the team is is content. We also build a lot of content that can go on these displays that are specific to the team brand, the team image. Um, it could be games that the fans play in between quarters and between uh, plays. But you're really trying to, you know, our displays are there to complement the game and not necessarily take over the game. Uh, but we want to make sure that when there's breaks in the action that you can use the display technology to entertain your fans. And usually the, the, the size of the display catches people's attention and gets them engaged in what you're trying to show an advertisement or a crowd prompt. Um, it's always very exciting and you want to, you want fans to come back because they can't get it in their home. Um, you want to give them something in a stadium or an arena that they just can't get at home. That makes good sense. And for some of these uh, scoreboards that may not be in a dome or an arena, they're out in the elements. So how do you make sure they can operate in extreme heat in Arizona or maybe extreme cold up at uh, Lambeau Field or wherever? Uh, you know, is there kind of uh, some test bed where you can uh, deal with some really challenging, harsh weather conditions? Well, Dactronics corporate headquarters is in South Dakota, so it doesn't get much colder than South Dakota. So we got a great testing opportunity in the winter months, but, but South Dakota doesn't have the heat of other parts of the country. And so we are an engineering company. That's, that's our, you know, our founders were engineers, so we're strong in the engineering. And we really test our, test our products to fail. So we have a reliability lab that is state of the art, and, and we've got many different tests that we put our products through. We've got a halt chamber that actually can increase the temperature up to over 160 degrees, or it can quick quickly drop it below 29 degrees. And so we do temperature cycling with our products. Really, we're testing it to fail. And by testing it to fail, you get a better understanding of, of what components um, and, and how long is this display going to last. Most most of our customers are expecting a 10-year lifetime. And so we, we want to do this testing to better understand that components and pieces, what can they withstand? What, uh, you know, what's their what's their lifetime um, in the real world with heat and cold, rain and and anything else that might come at it? We want to predict better how our product's going to perform over that ten year lifetime. And sometimes it's as simple as changing out a very expensive component uh, to get a longer lifetime to get really better customer satisfaction at, at the end of the day. So we really put our products to the paces. Um, you know, we've got some products that are that are near the ocean. We've had some products that have been on cruise ships. Um, cruise ships is an interesting one. You not only have a hot, humid, salty environment, which adds another degree of difficulty, but there's also slow vibration on a ship. So you want to understand what vibration does to your to your displays. Um, so we really test our products. We actually test them to fail and then identify why they failed and then try to work to, to make the next one better um, by changing out parts and pieces uh, so we can do that give that assurance to our customers that we've got a 10-year product. 
All very interesting. And uh, what are some of the toughest weather challenges? The, the vibration on a cruise ship is kind of interesting, but but uh, for heavy rain or hurricane force winds, uh, maybe even uh, and some of these extreme severe thunderstorm environments, uh, how do you test in the product reliability lab? Well, we, we actually uh, we, we actually put it through its paces. We've got machines that actually spray water right into the face of our displays um, to, to make sure that we get a ceiling people in the front that doesn't allow water to get in. Um, but if it does get in, we also use silicone on the front side and the back side of our outdoor products to make sure if water does get in, um, that, that the electronics are protected and the electronics are safe. That makes sense. Uh, final question for you, are there a lot of differences in the products that you roll out for an indoor versus an outdoor facility, or uh, is it generally the same hardware for both? Well, it's, it's, it's similar. And, and when I say that, you know, you're viewing, your video display is more about the viewing distance your audience is away from the display. So in an outdoor environment where you get a 100-yard football field, you know, the, the technology doesn't have to be as high of resolution because your audience is, is a long ways away and, and closer to the technology. So it's, it's probably higher resolution when you go indoors than it needs to be outdoors. And you also don't have to have the same same uh, weather-resistant uh, pieces to an indoor product. For the most part, you're not going to get uh, get moisture, and you're not going to get rain indoors. You're not going to be dealing with really the toughest thing is is the sunlight, UV degradation. UV can uh, the sunlight can really punish particular items, and you don't have that on an indoor indoor facility. So your weatherproofing doesn't have to be as great indoors as it does outdoors. But outdoors, you really you really got to protect your displays from the sun. That's generally the hardest piece on it. And if the sun and allows water to get into the display, you got real problems. So outdoor is is uh, is really a challenging environment, and that's why we spend a lot of money and a lot of time making sure our products can withstand the elements. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jay Parker, President or Vice President uh, for live events at Dactronics. Jay, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much for having us. Hey, AccuWeather viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here. And you can also click on any of the videos here to stay up to date on the latest weather news. Thanks for watching.